Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at OneSpin with Salahadeen Hedelani, who's going to talk today about how to speed up FPGA development. So Salahadeen, the, the FPGAs themselves are getting a lot bigger than they were in the past. What do we have to do to accelerate the development of these? Because obviously everybody wants to get to market faster and you want to make sure that when you get to market, it's actually going to work. That's right. Uh, so basically we could do uh, use of the simulation and that would speed up the, the development of the FPGA. But what could we use to be more efficient actually is to integrate formal into the flow itself. So you don't actually get rid of the simulation. What you're also doing is adding things in that weren't there before. Yes, yes, exactly. So why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So, so Heidi, what are we looking at here? Uh, what we are looking at here is basically the general flow of uh, FPGA development. So we have an RTL design, we synthesize it, basically place and route it, and generate the bitstream, program our device, and if we find bugs there, then we could do in-circuit debugging, fix the bug, and yeah, iterate again through the uh, full process. As these designs get bigger, as they become more complicated, uh, you probably have more bugs that, that you have to deal with. How do you find them? What sort of problems does that create? Uh, usually is by integrating simulation basically to the flow. So simulation would enable us to find bugs earlier so that we don't need to, to iterate too much for, for, for the same uh, design, for the same flow. And that actually uh, involves finding test benches and uh, finding test vectors and writing test benches, basically, which is an overhead. And as an example, for, for even for using this simulation, we find a case in, at one spin, basically, where we have simple design. Uh, we simulated using Vivado, and basically, this design has two switches as inputs and LEDs as outputs. Activating any one of them, basically, by itself, uh, would set the LEDs to, to behave in a certain behavior. However, activating both of them at the same time is considered a dangerous situation, and we should get always a red uh, color on the LEDs. And that was actually the case on the simulation itself. However, after synth uh, synth uh, synthesizing the design and generating bitstream, we found that what, uh, on the port, the, while activating these two switches, the LEDs weren't red for the whole time. They were red only for a specific period of time, and then they switched to another color. So also, using simulation itself is not enough. And what we introduced here is basically to integrate formal into this flow before even doing simulation. In the past, we've typically done a divide and conquer type of approach. Mm -hmm. The simulation has done bits and pieces. Now we're trying to do more of this at the time. So really your plan has to incorporate all these pieces together, right? Yes, basically. It's kind of unified effort. Uh, a bit of formal, a bit of simulation in the, uh, I mean, in the purpose of speeding things up. So, yeah. So how much can you actually save in terms of design time on an FPGA? Is it more that you're doing the, the same thing in less time, or are you doing more in the same time? Uh, no, basically we are doing we are doing the same thing in way less time. So for, for this bug, uh, for example, using here auto checks that are based on formal basically, figured out the, the issue in, in seconds. And this would let us avoid going through all these steps in order to, to do, do it the usual way. So yeah, this is time saving, I would say. So in an FPGA, which is programmable, theoretically you should be able to fix almost everything versus an ASIC, which is pretty much set in stone, you can't do anything about it. Where does, what happens here? Why do we have to fix these things up front? Uh, that's right. Uh, we would like to fix them since it is possible. So 
uh, in FPGA, it is still possible, and it's a matter of reducing this number of iterations, basically. While in ASIC, it's not the case. In ASIC, we need to re reproduce the whole chip again if we, in case we find bug and, and so on. And this becomes more important as we start moving into functional safety type of applications, right? So you think about your LED example. That is probably less of a uh, an issue for a lot of companies, even though it, it's uh, illustrative of what you're trying to say. But as these things start showing up as bugs in a uh, automotive chip, for example, where your life depends on it, that's a whole different ballgame. Uh, that's totally true. Basically, what we showed here is a very simple example. I mean, uh, imagine having uh, having such kind of bugs in a way bigger example. So. What, uh, what is the trade-off between the, the time to, to figure out the uh, bug in big example uh, versus uh, finding it way earlier if you integrate formal into the process? So yeah, that's the main point. So now that you have your flow and you're inserting formal into this, yeah. does it have to work in specific places? Are you confined to that plan or can you use it as you need it later on? Actually, uh, this is an interesting point because it's not only using uh, formal would be helpful, let's say, before before synthesizing the design or before uh, simulation. Even if you want to, for example, uh, compare the results of the synthesis, uh, what we got as a netlist compared to the RTA regarding functional correctness, is the netlist behaving exactly as what we expected or not? So in this scenario, we could also use formal just to compare the RTL against netlist, as well as basically netlist against the result of place and row. So yeah, formal could be used in many places actually in this flow. So in order to work with formal, do you need a specific expertise that you didn't have before? Uh, in this uh, case, basically, you don't need because Integrating the auto checks uh, that are formal based basically before simulation is push button solution. So you don't need to have any knowledge about formal in order to apply it. Uh, same for example for equivalence checking. If I want to uh, do an EC basically between netlist and RTL, then the only thing you need to do uh, is a bit of mapping, and still, this is highly automated uh, by the tool itself, so yeah. It's the next step where you need that drill down kind of expertise, right? You really need to understand what you're doing. Yes, yes. Salahuddin Hedelani, thanks for a great explanation. You're welcome.